Welcome to this week's episode of For the Now Space News for the week ending December 10th, 2022. I'm your host, Colin Jason Hyphen Matthew Colin Glass. You may call me Jason. And as usual, I'll be going through some of the past week's headlines, syntaxing them, showing where the fictitious conveyance of grammar is, and also giving some viewpoints concerning the headlines, as well as a cultural contribution in which I do a short review on a book, and then also the cognitive conjecture portion, where this week I'm going to start going over some of... uh, some of the more conspiratorial aspects of the internet that I've come across in uh, the years since the internet became public. So you won't want to miss that, as well as a couple memes to tickle your funny bone. Thank you for joining me. Without further ado, let's get to the headlines. Ladies and gentlemen, the protocol of what I'm going to be doing with these headlines is I'm going to be syntaxing them. And by syntaxing, I mean banking numerical values to the words you see on your screen. These are the syntax values. You can also see them up there at the top of your screen in the upper starboard side corner. Also, you will see highlighted areas in yellow. Those are what is known as particles of negation. Now, you can go ahead and look it up on my YouTube channel to find out what exactly that means. Long story short, they're a particle of a word that has a negative condition of state. And remember, we are looking at this through the lens of the mathematical interface on grammar, correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax grammar. First headline comes from Al Jazeera. Iran conducts first protest-related execution. The man was convicted of injuring a security guard with a knife while others have been sentenced to death. We have a series of adjectives, protest hyphen related, being a compound adjective in the past tense, coloring execution into a pronoun. We have the particles of negation, PRO, which means no, means the same thing as PRE and PRI. RE means no. ED is a past condition of state. And vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word and execution is also a particle of negation. Um, I've always wondered about people who protest. It's sort of like prisoners inside a prison protesting to the prison warden to make a positive change for them. It just doesn't make much sense. But on the other hand, on the more rule one, rule equal, honorable, graceful side of it, uh, this sort of reminds me of what I've heard about Saudi Arabia and even China. Uh, execution for, you know, whatever the state wants to do. If you're, not, if you're not following the terms and conditions that the state imposes upon you, well, then that's what's going to happen. And contract is by consent. Unfortunately, in many places in the world, Might makes right. Next headline comes from Al Jazeera also. U.S. prison warden found guilty in rape club abuse case. Ray Garcia is first of five defendants to go to trial on charges of abusing detained women in California prison. Right off the bat. I mean, this is despicable. Horrendous. Unreal. We have adjective, adjective, adjective in the past tense, adjective, pronoun. And then we have the dollar store quotations, rape club. So that's a break and it continues to the evidence, i.e. excessive spacing because you have a space after in and a space before abuse. That's two spaces. Rape club is in those dollar store quotations, meaning it's not there. It falls under the four corner rule. So therefore, abuse case is a completely different section and that is adjective, pronoun. Just as in the uh, the former headline we did, the bottom part is in italics, which also falls under the four-quarter rule and is not on the page, and therefore, I would not syntax it. Again, completely despicable. I know that the U.S. judicial system 
is completely arbitrary. It follows the money. There is no justice. Hopefully this one time uh, something will come of it so that these people pay for those deeds that they committed if they indeed did commit those deeds. Another headline from Al Jazeera. As U.S. watches on, China-Saudi relations grow in importance. Chinese President XI arrives in Saudi Arabia to much fanfare, unlike the low-key welcome afforded to U.S. President Biden. We have adverb, adjective, adjective, pronoun, adjective, compound adjective, China-Saudi, adjective, relations, pronoun, grow, Nothing can follow a pronoun except for a break in the continuance of the evidence, or as in this case, an adverb which is modifying importance into a dangling participle verb. Yeah, I mean, two nations such as China, which has draconian uh, measures in place to control their population, and Saudi Arabia, who does public beheadings. Yeah, that's a... <laughs> Sort of the, I don't know, executioner-style Brady Bunch, I guess, sort of relationship. Why would President Biden get uh, any kind of welcome over there anyways? I mean, besides the fact that they speak two different languages, people that even speak Biden's own language can't even understand him. I'm a grammar teacher, and I, I don't understand him 90% of the time. Next headline, Russia frees U.S. basketball star Brittany Griner in prison swap. Moscow says Griner was traded for Victor Bout, a Russian former arms dealer convicted and jailed in the United States. We have a series of adjectives culminating in pronoun Griner, followed by adverb in, modifying prisoner into an adjective, which is coloring swap into a pronoun. Um... Yeah, I mean, I've heard that, that there is a United States Marine being held prisoner in Russia. Uh, no words about that. I guess the, the most important thing is to get this U.S. basketball player and Russian lawbreaker back into the past tense United States so that she can be free to kneel during the first national anthem that she hears. Next headline comes from Sputnik, Musk's Twittergate, and Hunter's Laptop. Why FBI have a ton to answer for. We have adjective, adjective, conjunction, adjective pronoun. The conjunction serves as a bridge connecting the adjective tangible contract modifiers. And then the full colon functions as a full stop. And then we begin again with an adverb Y, modifying FBI into adjective, have, pronoun, a, adverb, ton, verb, adverb in the future tense, to, modifying answer into an adjective, which is coloring for, into a pronoun. The FBI has a ton to answer for. That's interesting. And I'm curious as to whether, uh, I don't know, whoever's looking for answers, I'm curious if they'll ever get their answers. I don't know what Musk's Twitter gate is. I have no idea what that is. I do know what Hunter's laptop is, but I don't see anything happening to that guy because he's in the good old boys club. By my opinion. Next headline comes from Sky News. Doctor removes 23 contact lenses from eye of patient who forgot to take them out for almost a month. The woman apparently kept putting new lenses in every morning without removing the set from the day before. We have adjective, 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 pronoun, adverb, verb, adverb, adjective, pronoun, and then we have the dollar store quotations which we will not syntax because it falls under the four-corner rule. Then we start again with the woman, adverb, verb. Then we have apparently with the uh, L-Y modifier and poisoner, poisoning apparently into non-tangibility, adverb, adjective, pronoun, adverb, adjective, pronoun, adverb, verb, adverb, verb, adverb, adjective, pronoun, adverb, adjective, pronoun. 
Enough said about that one, ladies and gentlemen. I don't even have a commentary on that. That's crazy. Next headline comes from NPR. Tampa police chief resigns after she flashed her badge to escape a traffic stop. Speaking of the good old boy club, adjective, 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 pronoun, adverb, verb in the past tense, adverb, verb, adverb in the future tense, verb, adverb, adjective, pronoun. That's really no surprise there. Uh, it's surprising that it made the news, though. That's what's surprising. <laughs> Next headline, Maryland is the latest state to ban TikTok in government agencies. Adjective pronoun, adverb, adjective pronoun, adverb, future tense, adjective pronoun. TikTok is one word, it looks like there. So reading TikTok as one word with no space between the K and the T. Uh, if it were two words, then it would be ban TikTok would be 334. Uh, in is adverb, government, adjective, and agencies is a pronoun. That's interesting. That sounds like uh, that sounds like that uh, government agencies in Maryland have gone full China, full on China. <laughs> Zhao Zhenghao. Next up, we have your weekly now space syntax lesson coming from NPR. What does the Respect for Marriage and Act do? The answer will vary by state. Let's identify the particles of negation. RE is a particle of negation, meaning no. FOR is a particle of negation because it is future tense. ACT is a particle of negation, has A, vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of the word. Uh, another vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of the word. WILL is future tense in this case. Uh, that's about it. So let's go into the syntax. And we usually start at the end of the sentence because it's the most effective and efficient way to syntax and we identify each word as tangible or non-tangible and then that dictates and credentials the syntax bank uh, syntax values we will be banking as bank bankers of this derelict vessel so state is definitely a tangible contract dangling participle verb being modified by non-tangible contract by very is tangible contract pronoun will is tangible contract adjective in the future tense. Answer is tangible contract adjective. The is non-tangible contract adverb. We have do as a pronoun, act as an adjective, marriage is an adjective, for is an adverb, respect is a verb, the is an adverb, does is a verb, and what is an adverb. If you'd like more information, on how to syntax and how to parse, check out those respective playlists if you so choose, or contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen and apply for a correct grammar workshop. In this week's cultural contribution, I'd like to offer the contribution of the book Return to the Brain of Eden by Tony Wright and Graham Ginn. Now this book gives an outline of Tony's theory of how mankind obtained its level of intelligence over evolving over many, many years and the way that our diets have actually stunted our cognitive function and part of that theory uh, goes back to the origins of mankind uh, by Tony's uh, to paraphrase Tony's words basically we began in the jungles perhaps of Africa and lived in the jungles and did not eat meat had a symbiotic relationship with our environment i.e. we ate mainly fruit that was it. Figs and things like that. And this enabled uh, the awesome development of our brains past the other species. 
uh, to put it one way, and that um, this allowed us to progress very far along the quote-unquote evolutionary ladder, but then due to certain circumstances, some of us left that safe haven where there were no predators or anything like that and went out into the the outer world and then had to take up things like farming and hunting and this actually um from my perception uh, from of what tony said stunted our development and stunted our growth and stunted our lifespans but it's a really cool book i highly recommend it i'll leave a link to a some places where you can get it in the description below the video. Return to the Brain of Eden. Tony Wright. Check it out. For this cognitive conjecture portion of the program, I'm going to look at um, some conspiracy theories or conspiracy websites or people involved in such things that I've encountered uh, since... I've been on the internet 1996, 1997. Um, some of the longest running ones. This one that I'm going to be looking at right here is definitely one of the longest running uh, individuals who had something to say, had a position to take. Uh, however you want to look at it, uh, Sherry Schreiner. And she was on the internet for a very long time. Had some very uh, unique uh, positions to take regarding religion, uh, the world system, the universe, so on and so forth. And this podcast right here is actually a podcast that I do subscribe to, Mile Higher Podcast. I think it's uh, very well balanced, except for a couple little hiccups here and there. But hey, you can't make everybody happy. But this is them giving their... Uh, summation of Sherry Schreiner. Let's take a listen. So Sherry hosted a weekly radio show and published over 200 videos to her YouTube channel, which is called The Watcher Files. It's actually still out there. Um, and then there's another channel she has that's all of her archived episodes of the blog talk radio um, where she hosted her show. But she has other websites, blogs. She's written multiple books, which I believe are still on Amazon. Um, but her conspiracy doomsday cult got its start on blog talk radio, which was basically a site or a platform where people could post their own radio show or podcast. So this is like predating all of the, the modern mm -hmm. podcast platforms. And we actually have a clip of Sherry explaining her calling and why you should support her. And in these videos, she never shows her face just by the way. So if you're listening, yeah. you're not missing anything yeah. on the screen. Sherry Schreiner. <laughs> I thought that was actual audio from this. Hello, everybody. I just wanted to do this video. Why you should support me. Why you should support Sherry Schreiner. I just want to do this short video. Just lay back, chill back, and, and let you chill know back. who I am. The Lord stood me up in 2001, 2002 to speak for him, to be a mouthpiece for him to the nations. And at the time, I thought that was crazy. I wasn't even on the Internet for four years at that time. And so I learned HTML coding, but I made the websites myself. And that's why everyone thinks they look pretty amateur. King David was my grandfather. I am of the bloodline of David. And I was born with a calling to be a prophet. And so I stood up for that calling. And so I do with the whole alien UFO underground bases. I deal with the whole issue of soul scalping. Everything around the paranormal world is on this site. You know, I was the first one screaming. Taylor Swift had been replaced. And finally, several years later, people are catching up. You know, if you want to know what I believe, I have that on my website at Sherry Schreiner. What I believe, who I am. Um, Orgonblasters.com, my Orgon War. Found a way to destroy the aliens. I had learned to hate so much. And this is the new world order that's coming, folks. The fake Jesus. That's Lucifer. This is me. My younger years, SherryTalkRadio.com. I certainly don't live in luxury. <laughs> right now, I can't even leave the house because my car doesn't start. I could go through the hardships and the, and the assassination attempts and the heart attacks I've had, but we have a long way to go, folks. 
Because people do not just, they do not know who God is. It's pathetic. This is my <laughs> full-time job. I don't have time to do anything else. I've given my, my life to the Father. I've devoted all my time to this. And so I invite you to join me. Join my team as a supporter. Join my war as an Orgon warrior. And, and just support me getting out truth or news. And, and just remember that I, I love you all. And yeah, bless. So does she have um, the lion? Is that lion of kind Judah. of going back to... Oh, what is it? It's the Lion of Judah is what it's called. Oh, see, so yeah. I don't know anything about this. Yeah. What is what the is Lion, it? the witch, and so, the wardrobe. <laughs> you're testing my, my Christian knowledge right now. <laughs> Put me on the spot. Yeah, let's hear it. See how much you remember. So I believe... Well, Lion of Judah is just like another basically symbol for god yeah it's a cultural symbol the association between the judah heights the judites and the lion can be first found in the blessing given by jacob jacob to his fourth son judah in the book of genesis so this is like old testament stuff okay but yeah it's that's what it is it's just another symbol which genesis in the old testament was taken from uh the sumerian cuneiform tablets those myths and legends, a lot of those came from the Enuma Elish and the Epic of Gilgamesh, which predate the Old Testament. Well, for God, basically. So is that why it was used in uh, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe? Well, C.S. Lewis, the author, was was Christian, and he has tons of Christian symbolism in those say. books. And yes, yeah. Aslan, the lion, is, Aslan, yeah, right. is God in right. essence. So so yeah, that's she's, she's just using it as a symbol to basically mm. be like, I am close to the Father. And, and this is what makes our job so hard mm -hmm. by looking into some of these conspiracy theories that we have in the past and things like that it's very difficult because there are people who that you know it just but just like anything in life any sort of religion it's uh, a spectrum theological idea there yeah there's all these different ways that you can take it right there's mm -hmm. there's infinite ways that mm -hmm. you can you can believe in something and because it's based on assumption and presumption and not based upon fact that's why there's so much argument about religion because where when there is a fact certified, there can be no argument. But if you can't certify the fact, then there's always going to be an argument. People thinking that they're right and this person's not right and blah, 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 because they can't certify the facts. So while she's talking about aliens and all these things that we talk about, but then she's connecting satan lucifer god and like these christian aspects and ideas to these conspiracies and kind of tying them together why not and i think that's where you know that's where things really go wrong is just you're, you're now tying spiritual things with paranormal things and saying that they're both correlated together like e even in episode ladies and gentlemen what's see i don't see a problem with that it's all based on speculation and personal experience and perception. Paranormal and spiritual, to me, are kind of like when you look at movies and stuff or music, they're kind of the same genre. Paranormal and spiritual fall into the same uh, genre, really, don't they? So it's that we've covered, we've gotten comments, and I know even mm -hmm. on my other podcast, Lights Out, people are like, don't you know that aliens are demons? And, yeah, I've seen those comments. And it's, it's actually demons that are possessing people and, hey, and abducting I mean, people. And I'm like, okay, that's one idea. Yeah, it's, it's an idea. And a lot of people don't believe in demons. A lot of people don't believe in angels and demons and God and heaven and hell because mm -hmm. that's just one spiritual theory idea. But for some reason... The people that believe in this like to say that this is the truth and i think that's where things get messy is like you're now claiming that what you're talking about is in fact cold hard facts and obviously there's just no way to possibly prove that that that's the case and that's what makes what did i just say <laughs> it's so dangerous as people Speaking like sherry as if it's that are true. right preaching yeah. it out to the world saying this is the truth join me in the fight because this is what's actually going on and i have no doubts and it's like that's fine that's your own opinion it's first amendment mm -hmm. everybody can say what they want to say yeah, but it's, it's like part of the human experience i think to make your own decisions about things and believe whatever you want but exactly and on that note i'll uh i'll stop the video here and 
what they go on to talk about is they share some things about Sherry Schreiner and her followers, and they compare what she did to having a cult because some of her followers actually went out. Uh, one of them, I think, committed suicide. Another uh, couple, the the girlfriend shot the boyfriend. Um, she was getting people to do things for her uh, all over the United States. They're her orgo and warriors and things. And that that's what they're kind of getting at here that they're kind of, I guess, implying that that it was wrong, somehow wrong of her to come onto the Internet and speak whatever her truth was. When really, that's not the case at all. You can say, like they just said, you can say whatever you want on the internet. It's up to you as to whether you buy into it or not. Are you gullible? Do you look at all the, do you do, you do forensics on what you're looking at? Or do you just buy into something, take someone at their word, and just believe in it and just fall in behind? And that's the whole thing about religion that I've spoken about so many times in the past is that, to me, the Bible and the Koran and monotheism are the single greatest psyop perpetrated upon mankind because whomever wrote those books convinced a good portion of mankind to believe in an assumption as a fact, to believe in something that you can't prove. And once you get people to believe in something that you can't prove, then you can get them to believe in anything. And then they can go out and commit atrocities and, and just bad things happen. I mean, good things can happen too. We only really concentrate on the bad things because those are the things that we hear about. The murders, the genocides, the religious wars, the crusades, the genocide of North America, North American First Nations, where the children were, you know, taken and forced to go to school, cut their hair, got beat and killed if they spoke their own native language. And these were in Christian, Catholic, Protestant, whatever, religious schools that had crosses on them. Let's put it that way. Um, that's Sherry Schreiner. She was, uh, she was into all that stuff. And uh, she's perfectly, I mean... It's a fine line, but if you're going to be in a society that supposedly is free and has free thinking, then you have to allow people like Sherry Schreiner to say whatever the hell they're going to say, as long as they're not harming other people. If you decide to buy into what someone like Sherry Schreiner says, that's your problem. And if you begin to trespass upon me in some way, that's also your problem. But you now you've made it my problem. And you can bet your butt that that trespass is going to stop quick, fast, and a jiffy. Here are a few memes to tickle your funny bone. The first one says, TikTok users, when a movie is longer than 10 seconds and the music isn't, oh no, oh no, oh no, 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 no. If you have TikTok, I'm sure you know what that means. Next one says, I was wondering why mom had a severed toe as a Christmas ornament until I took a closer look. And the final meme, some washing instructions, or as in the Northeast, they say washing instructions. Flip inside out and hand wash cold water so you don't ruin it like everything else in your life. And that wraps up for the Now Space News for this evening. Hope you enjoyed it. Still trying to cultivate a condition of state of progression. Uh, keep adding things, taking things away, making it more educational and more entertaining at the same time. Because, of course, the ultimate gain... The ultimate goal of any YouTuber is to create content that draws in subscribers, uh, draws in 
people who want to see what it is you do and share it. And so I've tried to make this news program informative, educational, entertaining, and also to promulgate the correct sentence structure, communication, policy, syntax, grammar, technology. And of course, if you want to learn that technology, if you want to actually get serious about it and fast track your progress, contact me at the email address across the bottom of your screen there. And I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation where you and I can look each other eye to eye, face to face, so to speak. You can ask me whatever you want, 10 to 15 minutes. All it costs is your now space. And we'll see if this is something that you indeed would like to move forward with. Uh, that aside, there are memberships available on this channel. There are two tiers. The second tier has access to exclusive content available to the public. I appreciate either tier, however. I appreciate the support. It helps keep uh, the equipment fresh and helps keep this channel vessel afloat. And of course, the almost 500 free videos on this YouTube channel, the sum total of my correct sentence structure knowledge, free to you, my gift to my fellow mankind. So until next week, I hope everybody has fun preparing for the holidays, however you celebrate them, if you celebrate them, and I will see you then.